welcome back. So I thought today's video was gonna be about potatoes. Turns out it's about progress. I mean, there's also potatoes, but there's some progress too. What I mean by progress is not only are you gonna see my gardening skills progress some, you're going to see my children grow, you're going to see what I believe is a bit of a health transformation for myself. I know I still have a long ways to go when it comes to that and gardening as well. I don't know about you, but sometimes I tend to get so focused on how far it is that I still have to go that I forget to look back at just how far it is that I have already come. I think this video is a perfect example of that. So at the beginning, you're gonna see blurry footage. You're gonna see the camera out of focus. I let someone borrow my camera. I didn't know how to check the settings once I got it back to make sure that everything was as it should be, and so it wasn't. Things are in uh, full screen instead of wide angle, but as the video progresses from last year to this year, you're gonna see the camera work slowly get better. You're gonna hear the audio slowly get better. There's just a lot of progress in this video. And I've been wanting to do a YouTube channel like this for a very long time. And so I have lots of footage accumulated from over the years that I'm now trying to piece together with new footage that I'm making. But sometimes I would get frustrated and think, why am I even doing this? I'm never, I'm never, this is, I'm never gonna put this on YouTube. This is never gonna become a thing. Why am I doing this? And so when I was having those types of days, I have missing footage. There are gonna be several clips where I cut in like this and explain to you what's about to happen or what has just happened and kind of help the video progress a little but this is a work in progress this is a beautiful mess and I'm so glad you're here for it let me give you a little bit of background for this video the first clips that you're gonna see after this introduction clip were shot I believe in April of 2020 last year we did a Ruth Stout method for the potatoes this year we went no dig so this is the accumulated footage of both of those experiences. And out here, I don't know if you can see it, in this area out here, that's gonna be where this video begins. The kids and I clearing out this because we're gonna make it into a potato patch. So let's cut right to that. It was so dense that you couldn't even see through it. That's what it looks like right now. I'll take you down there and show you. I wish I would have remembered to show you before. This side we've got pretty clear. And there were trees growing up. There's still one here and one there. Are you making a video? Yeah, you wanna say hi? Hi. And my clippers aren't big enough for that. Not sure what we're gonna do about that. We cleared this fence line. It was all covered over with honeysuckle. Not that I don't like honeysuckle, but it's in our way for what we're trying to do right now. And that side's got honeysuckle all over. And so now we're gonna clear all this out and we'll do a time lapse of that. I can't really tell if you can see or not, but I hope so. All right, this is what the potato patch looks like now. That we've got all of the weeds cleaned out. So now before more weeds have a chance to grow up, we're gonna cover it in hay that's already starting to rot. Okay, now that we've got the spot for the Ruth Stout potato patch all cleared, we are going to put some hay in there. And to do that, we are going to need something to haul that hay in. So we bought a gorilla cart. In this next clip, Raylan and I are gonna be assembling that gorilla cart. I included this because it's a lot of fun. Raylan does a lot of cute stuff in there, and I thought that you would enjoy it. Also, in this next clip, you're gonna see a section where the boys and I are pulling the gorilla cart full of hay out here to the back. You might wonder why we didn't hook it up to the lawnmower. That was the plan the whole time, but I didn't have a correct hitch or something to hook the gorilla cart up to the lawnmower. So let's assemble that gorilla cart. Hey, Raven, what do we got here? We got here a cool farmer box. A cool farmer box? Mm-hmm, that's a farmer box. Oh, this is the farmer box, okay. We'll show them what we got, if you can see it. 
We're excited, aren't we? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if we can put this thing together. Um, this We're gonna save the cardboard. How? For our no dig bed inspired by Charles Dowdy. Ah! Uh. Wow, we need to fix this. Go get your socks and shoes, and then you can come to the garage and help me find it, okay? Okay. All right, well, we're gonna gather some tools, I guess. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go switch out to the vlogging camera. That will be much easier than this. Ready, right, then? Where did you go? Ready, right, then? Where are you? I'm here. You're right here? You got your socks and shoes? All right, well, let's get them on. Okay, let's go get our tools list first. Get our tools, come on. Butter don't fall downstairs. Uh, As I almost saw. Like it. You ready to go put our cart together? Mm -hmm. That's me, a fighter. You're a worker. That's how we are our teamwork. Because teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> That's right. Think we're going to take a picture? We're taking a video. Oh, are you taking video? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> That's our idea. Just a second. Okay. Let me get this first one on. Okay, I'm gonna stick it through and then you put the ring on it. Hold this. Don't drop it. Okay. Don't drop it. Okay. Put it on here. Okay, both of us are gonna do these. Clearly this is taking longer than I thought. Two hours later. Okay, so Raylan and I finished putting the cart together and now we've recruited Dylan. Right there. We're gonna take some hay bales back there to our cleared potato patch. What do you think? You think it'll fit? Yeah. Me and Raylan would fit in there. You and Raylan would fit in there? Okay, we brought one, two, about nine of the square bells over here to put in the potato patch. And we're gonna spread those out and see what they look like. And we may need more. Come on, Tucker, we're gonna have to get the dogs out now. Come on, Tucker. How long does it take to like run out of 
minutes. Okay. Clip two. Come point it down over here. What you do then is take them and fluff them a little bit. These are already hot because they were composting. Perfect. And these gloves are perfect for that. Just use the little claws and break up the hay. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> That's right, not sponsored, by the way. But I will put a link below. Good, because I don't know how. That's it for now, and we'll update whenever we're closer to being done. It's the next day. I had to stop yesterday because the hay was making me feel like my skin was on fire. Today, I'm wearing rubber boots and long pants, but there's not too much more to go. I'll show you a little bit more. Another thing I wanted to add to the discussion yesterday is if I was just laying this hay down in the anticipation that in a couple of months, I was gonna be planting a crop in here, I would totally just leave it like this. It's just a weed barrier, maybe overlap them a bit like that and just let them decompose. That way they would be great for the plants that I'm gonna plant. But since I'm actually planning on doing seed potatoes in just a week or so, I'm fluffing them. That way there'll be more air to get through to my seed potatoes, all of that. If I weren't planting something this quickly, I would leave it like this, not fluff it, and just let it decompose. Something else. This doghouse is too heavy for me to move, and I can't get any leverage on it because it's right up against the fence on two sides. I thought I might be able to get it from over here and tilt it from here over and just flip it end over end until I could get it out that gate. However, it's so heavy and I can't get any leverage on it. So for now, it's gonna stay here. I'm hoping I can talk my neighbor into coming over with his tractor and lifting it out because where I want it is just right on the other side of this fence. Might be easier to pull the fence back and drag it out and then close the fence again. I'm not sure. So for right now, it's staying here. Whenever we do get it out, if it comes out, I think I'm gonna have the kids paint it, each board a different color. So that's where we're at. Gonna continue on. There's been a new development. So I got the dog house most of the way out. Can't give up now, because it's blocking the gate, but I'll try to set you up so you can see comedy ensue of me moving this thing. All the hay that I have spread. So I gotta finish up some over here. Dylan's helping get some of these roots out so that we can set the doghouse there. Here. Back at it. Okay. Well, it is afternoon now, almost 7 p.m. I don't remember the last thing I filmed, but we did finish the potato patch somewhat, and I just took a shower, and I am exhausted. I'm going to take you out and show you the finished product, kinda. And then I'm gonna go in and spend time with my family and probably go to bed, but I wanted to show you what all we finished first. So the dog house is still right here, because this is as far as I had energy for today. It'll get to its final resting place whenever I figure out where that's gonna be. I was thinking, at first I thought there, I'm still kinda thinking there, but maybe there. I don't know, I'm not sure. So the boys and I used our gorilla cart there and we brought in a load of mulch to put just in the entrance way. My gate fell off the hinges about the time that I got everything finished. So that'll be another project for another day. But I've got it closed enough now where the dogs won't get in there. So you can kind of see how deep it is. Yeah, hopefully. It's about four or five inches deep. There it all is. I haven't figured out where the rows and all of that stuff are gonna be, but at least it's ready for now when the potatoes come. The majority of the work is done. I also gave Tucker a haircut today. Bought some new wireless dog clippers. I ran out of juice before I could get all three of them done. But I got Tucker done. He's much cooler. Bailey is still super bushy, so we'll have to work on Bailey tomorrow. And I only got half a coat of done before the battery went dead, so 
She's looking pretty scraggly. We'll finish her off tomorrow. If I can find her, she may be hiding because she's so ashamed of her haircut. But, oh, there she is. Come here, Coda Bear. Come here, show everybody your haircut. Look, she's hiding. Come here, Coda Bear. She's like, no, I'm leaving. <laughs> there you are. There you are, sweet girl. Come here. Look, it's okay, come here. <laughs> you don't have to be embarrassed. You're still pretty. All right, so that's it, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye. Potato patch time, it looks like. Look at this dirt. I'm sitting underneath this hay. Is it good dirt? Yes. Really? It's dark and rich now. It wasn't before. So now what are you doing? I'll show you on this one. Dig back the hay till you get to the dirt, and then just put three in there like that mm -hmm. and then you cover it back over with it and you do them each foot and a half to two feet apart cool did the dirt get softer yeah huh. it was all hard and compressed yeah i remember that those things we need to trim out there's that one that's called the devil's walking stick you see how it's oh yeah it's got all the spikes on it i may not pull that out by hand right now <laughs> can't believe how beautiful the dirt is it really turned out pretty well. Are you planting them with the eyes up? Yeah, I'm putting a flat surface down. It's roost out, you know how she does it? She just throws them in there, doesn't she? She just tosses it in there. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And these are the first ones you're doing. You've got the other. You, I've you, got the seed potatoes there. This, and, and we're not cutting those. We're just gonna put those in whole. Yeah. And see how that goes. It's getting ready to rain here for about three days. So that's why Dan was out here early this morning. Working. Trying to get them all in the ground before, before the, the rain. rain starts. Can't remember exactly how long it is, but they grow up and then they'll flower. Mm -hmm. And then once everything dies back, that's when they'll be ready to harvest. And since we're getting such a late start, I'm sure it will be autumn. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you just cover them back up, huh? So that there's no sun that can reach them. And then once they start growing up through and making little tubers, you bring in more hay and just put it on top and keep stacking it. Ah, gotcha. And then when you harvest them, it's kind of like a treasure hunt. <laughs> Here we go. These are the ones we cut in half or more. And these are the ones we left whole. They're all in their little homes. Oops, the dog came and grabbed one. All right. So now I'm going to cover them all back up. I'm trying to get it done before the rain gets here. It's sprinkling already. Okay, they're all covered up, but I didn't get it done a second too soon because it's starting to rain on me. Can't wait to see what happens. Hey, we have potatoes, huh? Oh. Oh. Potato, 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 potato. There's a bunch of potatoes. Well, you got some potatoes growing. of our fence line right here there runs a power line that goes straight across I don't know if it varies state by state but here in Alabama the power company comes through every so often and trims any of the limbs that look like they might be in danger of touching the power cords we get lots of storms here with heavy winds and so the power company came through and they trimmed any limbs that look like they might fall on the power line if a big storm came through and some of the limbs broke. When they did that, part of that is over the top of the potato patch. They trimmed those limbs and those limbs fell into the potato patch on top of my potatoes and on top of the fence. So that's what this clip is. 
I recruited Elliot to come out and he helped me clear out the limbs and it only took us about 10 minutes and so here's the clip from that. I just remembered I wanted to go get a better view of the power line so you could see what I was talking about, how when they came through and cut it. All right, let me get you turned around so you can see. Okay, so here is like where the peppers and melons and things are, like if you watch all the garden tours. And this is the back fence line. And here is the power line that has a transformer that goes to the garage and then here. This is a big pecan tree. It came through and just chopped it off. And then the power line comes through here, comes through there. It's all the way down through there. So they came in and chopped all the limbs either side of the power line. And that's how it goes through the back. I wanted to show you the potato patch. These are all potatoes. potatoes okay this is where the footage stopped for the 2020 potatoes I'm not sure if I didn't film it or if I was having one of those moments of I'm never gonna put this up so what's the point basically what happened was while we were waiting for the potatoes we also had tomatoes in the kitchen garden area and we had used the same hay that we used on the potatoes to fill up part of the raised garden bed to make kind of like a composted garden lasagna basically and then we planted tomatoes in those raised garden beds and then we noticed the leaves on the tomatoes were starting to curl and I started doing research and there were a couple of things that it could have been but I was pretty sure that the hay that we had gotten from the local co-op had a broadleaf herbicide in it so it was killing the tomatoes and I'm pretty sure that that's why all the potatoes were curly all the leaves were curling up and they were leggy and curly the potatoes still flowered like they didn't flower a lot but it was also my first time growing potatoes so I wasn't entirely sure what I was looking for they flowered and then the greens fell over and died and so it was time to harvest the potatoes went out to harvest the potatoes dug back all the hay and there was nothing there like nothing not even this like nothing there was nothing there so the potatoes had put all of their energy into growing greens because they were poisoned and no energy into producing tubers so I did not get one potato from that experience I did learn a lot but I didn't get any potatoes so fast forward to this year 2021 I'm not sure when the first clip starts it's either April or May I can't remember I got a notepad here to help me remember oh one more thing I wanted to add about the hay. Even though that hay was poison and it didn't do me any good, it did sit for seven weeks before I planted the seed potatoes and the soil underneath it was beautiful. So if you have access to hay that doesn't have a broadleaf herbicide in it, I highly recommend going that route just because the soil was so beautiful afterwards. Also, the type of potatoes that I plant in the Ruth Stout method were Corolla seed potatoes. They should have been harvested between 80 and 100 days from plant. And I planted, how much did I plant? I planted 10 pounds total. It's starting to rain, but I wanted to get a clip of what the potato patch looks like now, current day. Also, this is the backyard area. And that's where the doghouse ended up for now. Obviously, I didn't put it in that corner. I put a garden there. So this is the potato patch now. Gate still broken. Limbs have fallen down from storms. The weeds have grown up. Devil's walking stick is back. So I'm hoping to one day maybe turn this into a chicken enclosure. I think that might be a great use. And then, ooh, look at all those pretty red tomatoes over there. Sorry, got distracted. Then what I can do is I can just throw stuff from the garden over to the chickens. Maybe I can turn the doghouse into a coop. Who knows? That's what the potato patch looks like now. No potatoes. Ah!